If you read Genesis chapter 49, why is the father declare something in Genesis 1 to 3? And if you go down, it says, Gather my sons together so that I will tell them what will befall them in their last days. Gather them. Gather my sons so I will tell them. So they began to prophesy, beginning from Reuben and to others. He got to verse 19. He said, God, you are my son. But God, you, see, you know something? A troop will trample on you. But later, you will overcome. You will overcome later. You win the battle at last. <laughs> now look, do you know what a troop is? A troop is a, is a military term. Now, you remember, what fights you does not just only fight you. It fights anyone that will help you. What fights you also fights you when you get to the place that you will be helped. The enemy does not just only fight you. He fights who wants to help you. You can come to a place of deliverance, a place where God sets people free. And when you get there, the enemy can block you from the person that will deliver you. You know how? The enemy can make you become unserious. The enemy can begin to make you misrepresent the person that God has sent to deliver you. You might even begin to join, to speak, gossip, and castigate the person. It's not the person, it is you. It is you who is in need. That's why Jesus said, it is the one that is sick that needs a physician, not the other way around. And I tell you this, this simple, singular ignorance is the reason why many people, like the man, has stayed in the water for 38 years. For 38 years, was he seeing miracles? He was seeing people getting deliverance. He was seeing people prospering. Why is he not prospering? He was, his focus was broken. He forgot why he went there. He forgot why he went there. That's the work of the enemy. So you can stay, but I will distract you from your deliverance. So look at what he did to this man. Anybody, don't, when you are praying, don't just pray only for your deliverance. Pray for those who God has also assigned to be part of your deliverance. To be part of you. I'm telling you. Remember, this man, God, his descendants, when you hear the gatherer, the gatherings, they are from God. And the prophecy will come through a man. And the man, the prophecy will come through. Do you know how many demons tormenting that man? Remember the father has said a troop will trample on you. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, and saw the demon. The, the, the demons in the man cried out, why have you come to torment us before our time? And Jesus said, who are you? Look at what the demon said. He said, we are we are legion. Legion also is a Roman military term. And in a Roman military formation, legion represents 6,000 soldiers. 3,000 horsemen and 3,000 foot soldiers. That is to say, one man. Do you understand what that man carried? For the enemy to send 6,000 soldiers, 6,000 demons on one man. It is what he's carrying. Because what he's carrying is for millions of people. And they had to send 6,000 demons. Now look, if, you're, if you read Luke chapter 4, his deliverance took place in Luke chapter 8. If you're a student of the Bible, you would know that. Why is Jesus? One day Jesus was ministering somewhere. Jesus, in the spirit, he said, let us cross over to the other side. The other side was where he would meet the man. But as soon as they cross over, the demon knew that Jesus was coming to deliver the man. You know what the demon did? He sent maybe 1,000 of the demon to leave the man for a while and go after Jesus. On the way, Jesus was in the boat. The Bible said they arose a tempestuous wind storm it was heavy that the ship began to sink the boat was sinking that peter had to cry they said master care us not that we perish come and see wind everywhere we are sinking we are about to die what came what was fighting the man left temporarily so what what is fighting you does not only fight you it sees who will help you he sees who can help you. And he can fight the person. He can also confuse you to fight what will help you. And warn to you that fight with God are destined to help you. 
The meaning of that is that you will never see help in your life. It's true. The moment Jesus, the word Jesus, he stood up and rebuked it, and everyone was calm. Imagine if he's a normal man who is not an, a man of authority, who is not a spiritual man. He's sent to come and help you with money, and wind came. The man will go back. The woman will go back. Come on, talk to me now. Yes. They will say, no, this is a sign. This is a bad omen. This is a sign. I tried to go there. The enemy, blew. I, I almost died on my way. No, this is a bad sign. That person is evil. The person, the person will turn back. Is that correct? Yes. The person will, ah, I want to go, and this kind of thing is happening. It's a bad omen. The person will not go. It was because it's Jesus who understand what was going on in the spirit. As soon as Jesus arrived, Jesus met the man. You saw the demons began, they continued though. Jesus had not attacked the demon yet. Jesus has not spoken. It is a continuation of the demon. Look at what he said. So you can connect it to what I'm saying. Because you don't read. You don't study to understand. It takes the spirit to teach you. Now, the first thing he said, ah, this man, you survived that water storm. You survived that temperature storm. Okay, now, why have you come here before? Why have you come to torment me before my time? That means he, stopped, he tried to stop Jesus from coming before the time. He tried to stop Jesus. That's why I said, why have you come to torment me before my time? There are journeys you want to make. You are struggling. Powers are fighting you. Paul said, once and again, I would have come to you. He said, but the enemy withstood me. Do you understand? Talk to me, somebody. Yes. He said, once and again, I would have come to you. That means there were people, there are people or somebody in need of deliverance, in need of healing, in need of God's word. But the devil is not just fighting Paul. The devil resisted Paul so that he will not go and deliver those people. Ah. To understand when you are praying, your prayer should not just be for only you. That's why you need to serve God so that God can help you. That's why you need to speak in tongues in your prayer. 99% of my prayer is speaking in tongues. It's only during worshiping and thanksgiving that I, I, I speak, I give thanks, I call him all the names that he deserves. I remember how he has helped me. Everything he's been in my life, his help and all, his mercies and all in my life. So when we say let's worship God, speaking in tongues is not worshiping God. Worship him. But after that, the whole of my prayer is in tongues. Because the most powerful way to pray is speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a crude oil. But when you pray in English, you can only be getting fuel. Teach, You can be getting only fuel. But when you begin to speak, give me 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. But when you begin to speak in the Holy Ghost, Lemumbrondis, Kadivaquantos, Medukamandia, Leporokosondish, Shadua, Malinqua, Kenondi Faradia, Kompenon Kamandos, Shalangua, Kiparagadia. As you begin to speak in tongues, The Holy Ghost is the refinery. Now, why many of you don't enjoy speaking in tongues is that you think you must pray, oh, let that witch die by fire. You want to address the witch to die. You want to, no, no, no. In speaking in tongues, if there is a witch that needs to die, there is a refinery that will refine the side. Uh -huh. Because in the same crude oil, you have diesel. In the same crude oil, you have fear. You also have aviation fuel. In the same crude oil, you have kerosene. Are you sure you are hearing me? So in the same speaking in tongues, uh -huh. the witch can die in speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. In the same speaking... Preach in the sense of the yes. commander. In the sense speaking in tongue, you can kill the witch. In the sense speaking in tongue, the altar can be demolished. Yes. In speaking in tongue, the angel of money can be released. Yes. Yonon Paranda, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How be it by the spirit?
Pick your ministry. By the Spirit. What is mystery? That means the direct telephone number of God is command press on a higher number. Even your neighbor understand the English you speak. Yes, the Benin you speak, your neighbor understand. Yes, ma'am. The Aousa you speak, your neighbor understand. Oh, yes. The Yoruba you speak, your neighbor. But when you say, Kamampriye non comparantum pelendu zopenandia, you have to be a man of the spirit with deep knowledge of the spirit by the help of the spirit to be able to interpret tongues. One day we'll do tongues and interpretation. Ah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Speak it. You speak mystery. It takes mystery to demystify mystery. Sisters and demons and Jesus said, come out. He said, don't send us away like that. Cast us into this wine. We can't go because if you send us away, we will be useless. Demons are useless without the body of expression. If you have ever studied demonology and you have ever seen the workings of demons, a demon can dwell in a, in a tree. Just to have it. That's why when you hear a forest is called an evil forest. It is the presence of the evil spirit there that makes the evil forest evil. So if you go and drive it, that's why in those days, even up to now, churches go to evil forest where people are running away from because they have the solution. When church, light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. So when church goes there, they surround the place. They anoint the place. They command all the demons to go. So light has come, darkness must go. They cut it down. They are expecting something to happen. Nothing will happen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Thank you. The first time we came here, it was not habitable for any tenant or anyone that bought it. There are people that bought this place, they ran away. They could not come back. A church came before us. They said about three churches, they ran away. We came here. The Lord said, if you want to buy it, you will deal with what is on the ground. I said, yes. The day we started the foundation, the Lord said, you will go there. Midnight praying and run the place. I had seven days prayer. In. And I saw what was in charge of this place. And what drives people away. Whilst we were praying, the Lord showed me where the buried charm. We uprooted it. And anointed it. That is how we took over. We took over. We entered it. The thing that was pursuing other people could not pursue us. Not only that we entered here, we bought and bought until we bought the last property owned by the man. Ah. And bought him out of this place. <laughs> hey! Yeah!